Uh, well, it is um, good to be able to connect even in this time where we are practicing social distance. Uh, and I appreciate Chad Parrish uh, for helping us with the technology to where we're able uh, to provide some Lenten reflections uh, during this time when we're unable to gather in person uh, in the fellowship hall as we have been for our Lenten lunches. But we will continue these discussions over the next few weeks, uh, talking and thinking about uh, the spirituals and the season of Lent, leaning on uh, much of the work of Luke Powery at Duke Divinity School. And I think during this time of Lent, and as we are practicing social distance, uh, Lent is helpful because it, it reminds us of those things that are universal, that bind us to one another, that provide us some perspective about solidarity. And during a time where we have to practice social distancing, reflecting on and thinking about what still binds us to one another uh, can be rather beneficial and even hopeful. And we're talking about the spirituals during the season of Lent because there is so much wisdom and instruction to be gained from those who faced uh, a suffering that is hard for us to really imagine. But those who faced uh, slavery uh, found uh, lessons uh, from the journey of faith that spoke hope into despair uh, and life in the face of death. And during Lent, when we are thinking about some of those related themes, uh, we learn from those who have passed through an experience that is so unimaginable for the rest of us. So this week, we are thinking about the spiritual, do Lord, remember me. And here is some of the text of that powerful spiritual. Do Lord, do Lord, Lord, remember me. When I'm in trouble, Lord, remember me. When I'm dying, Lord, Remember me. When this world's on fire, Lord, remember me. Do, Lord, remember me. That those words help us think about uh, many things that are important in our lives, particularly when we face hardship, when we feel alone and we are reaching out for a sense of strength that is beyond our own, although our experience is vastly different from the words that were first sung by the slaves. But they still speak to us uh, in manners in which we can benefit and learn from. First, memory, as the spiritual says, remember me, is a tricky thing. Uh, sometimes, uh, memory uh, eludes us, or rather, we wish it would elude us, that there are those things that we need to forget. As our faith says to us, you are forgiven, that we should not hold on to any regret from the past. Or where it says God is doing a new thing, that we're called to look forward and not to spend time looking over our shoulder. But then other times, we need to remember. We cannot forget. Like when the people of God were led out of Egypt into freedom from the bondage of slavery, it says that God heard their cries and remembered them that God went to Moses and said, go and lead my people to freedom. Or after the disciples had gathered with Jesus, breaking the bread and sharing of the cup, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, that there are many things we should never forget. 
And whenever we are in trouble, no matter how we articulate our prayer, whether it is in uh, verbalized words or just uh, in a feeling that we cannot even articulate, what is behind that prayer is some version of, Lord, remember me. Luke Powery writes, we need God to remember us because when God does this, God remembers us, puts us back together to make us whole, to assure us of the divine presence. And at its very heart, that is what this spiritual is saying. When I'm in trouble, when I'm dying, when the world is on fire, Lord, remember me. It's hard to imagine the depths of suffering that those who were enslaved faced and dealt with on a daily basis. But those words of the spiritual speak to us wherever we are that we need to know that God remembers us. And it really is amazing, hard to describe or explain how we are able to navigate many things just by knowing we are not alone. Not that someone else can come in and change the circumstances that we are dealing with, but that when we travel with someone beside us, we are able to endure and to move forward. That if you were to ask most any parent, particularly parents whose extended family lives far from them, or perhaps a single parent, they are quick to name the small community of friends that gather around them and that help them through so many of the hard moments in life, that we walk with others in those moments. Or perhaps we can think about days that we have spent sitting in a waiting room at the hospital, worried about and caring for a loved one who is a patient. And we, even years and years after, we can go back and quickly name the people and the friends who showed up regularly to bring us lunch or snacks or to sit with us in the waiting room to help us endure such a difficult time. Or perhaps it's the hand that reaches over to ours and just clenches it in one of those moments that we are facing an insurmountable decision that we're not sure what the best course of action might be, but we're able to put our best foot forward because someone is there to hold our hand. That alone, uh, life is completely overwhelming. But with others, there is the strength that we need to move through the struggle at hand that God remembers us. And because God remembers us, we are called to remember others. Uh, Lent, as a season, uh, are those 40 days that lead us between Ash Wednesday all the way through the events of Holy Week, including the darkness of Good Friday to the light of Easter morning. And the 40 days of Lent is meant to be a time of reflection and repentance, of remembering the love of God that we find in the life of Jesus and even on the cross. And those 40 days are meant to mirror the time that the Hebrew people spent wandering through the wilderness after they were freed from slavery and brought to the land that they would eventually call home. And those 40 days also mirror the time that Jesus spent in the wilderness, 
alone, facing temptation after baptism and before his ministry began. That we think about the wilderness and how God is found there or how God finds us there. That Lent is about remembering, knowing that God is with us wherever we are. Another name for Lent uh, that comes from a Syrian monk from centuries ago is that Lent is a bright sadness. It is a sadness because Lent takes an honest look at the struggles around us that we face and that others face, the tragedy uh, that visits people's lives, or just dealing with the reality of sin and the, ha the harm that it can cause. But this sadness has a brightness because of the hope that we find in God's presence that is always with us. That it is the Easter morning that follows the tragedy of Good Friday. That God's love is ultimately stronger than death. That there is nothing that can cause God's love to leave us and not to stay with us. That nothing can separate us from the love of God. It enables us to say, do, Lord, remember me. Uh, there's a story that my grandfather used to tell uh, when he was an elementary school student in Atlanta. Uh, he grew up not far from the Varsity, uh, that well-known restaurant in the heart of Atlanta where you uh, give your order and then they holler back to the cooks uh, what your order is. Uh, my great-grandmother, his mother, her favorite uh, meal in all of Atlanta was two chili jogs from the varsity. So growing up there uh, in the middle of downtown as an elementary school student, uh, he recalls one day when all of the students made a project for their parents. And they were all excited and proud because they had poured so much energy into this project throughout the day to give it to their parents. And he was looking forward to that moment when his mother would pick him up from school every day and he could give her this very important project. And after the final bell, all of the kids were standing outside in front of the elementary school, some of them getting on the school bus, uh, some of them being picked up uh, by parents in their family car, and then others were waiting for the parents to arrive, uh, as he did, that my great-grandmother would ride the city bus to the elementary school and pick him up, and then they would get back on the bus to ride home. And that day, as he waited holding his project in hand, uh, he watched as the other parents were arriving, and his classmates and friends were giving their project to their parents and the excitement in their eyes, the embrace of the parents, uh, how they were celebrating the work that had been done. And the longer he waited, uh, the more he became frustrated. At one point, uh, he almost got angry because she had not arrived when she normally arrived to pick him up. And all of a sudden, in his imagination, she had forgotten him, that he was standing there. He didn't know when she would show up or if she would show up. And here he is holding this project that he was so proud and excited to give her. So at some point, after the waiting had uh, weighed on him so much, he walked over to the trash can and discarded the project out of anger. It was shortly after that that she finally came walking up the sidewalk from a different direction that she normally came. And when he turned to look at her, uh, she was tired. She had heavy breathing. It was a very hot day. She looked weary. 
And she said, son, I'm so sorry. The city bus never showed up. So I had to walk all the way here. Well, he just hung his head, feeling an immense amount of regret and guilt that he had given up on his mom showing up and he had thrown away the project he worked so hard to give her. But also in the mixture of all of those emotions, he realized that she would never forget him, that she would never give up on him, that nothing would keep her from coming to get him. That we remember those words of the spiritual that speak to us wherever we are. Do, Lord, do you remember me? And Lent reminds us that God's answer is always yes. I remember you. That you will never be forgotten. Amen. Uh, We continue to remember one another during this time when we are apart, remembering that there is so much that binds us to one another. In fact, during this time of social distancing, the very thing that seems to keep us apart is actually an act of solidarity, that we are practicing social distancing out of a care and concern for one another, for the benefit of the common good, for the benefit of everyone. So as we are apart, we stand in solidarity with one another, remembering each other and holding one another in our prayers, knowing that God always remembers us.